Hi, this is David Golly from Pentagon Solutions and we're going to take a look at simple and more complicated ceilings in Autodesk Revit Architecture 2012. First thing we're going to do is take a look at a simple ceiling. I have a quick wall sketch layout here with a floor plan. Um, you can see in here that we have a um, floor plan for our first floor and our finished floor level at ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put in my project browser. So I'm just going to take this through the user interface. I'm just going to put in my properties as shown. Okay. So when you want to create a simple ceiling, if you go to home and you'll see ceiling. And when you pick ceiling on your properties, you can pick the type of ceiling you want. I'm going to pick a 600 by 600 grid. We have an option what level it's working from. So it's working from my finished floor level uh, on my ground floor. And it's 2.6 meters or 2,600 mil from that level. Um, two methods of creation, automatic, which will tie into the walls, or you can sketch, which we'll come back to. I'm just going to say automatic. So I simply pick, hit escape, and now you can see my ceilings in. The advantage of doing automatic is as my walls change, my ceiling will tie in with it. Again, the ceiling appearance you can see um, in the 3D view that the, the opposite side of it is solid. But if we actually have a look at a camera view of this, so let's pop this into um, our plan. Let's take a camera. That's exactly what the ceiling is going to look like, 600 by 600. And it's important to put the ceilings in, particularly to tie the likes of uh, fittings such as lamps and fans too. Okay, let's take a look at this a wee bit further. So um, I'm going to have a look in my elevation view, my east elevation view. And let's pop this out to 1 to 20. What I've actually done is I've created two levels. Um, these levels are high level ceiling and lower level ceiling. Again, this is a suggested workflow, but you don't have to actually stick to this. You can just stick to the offset. You'll notice that they're gray. This indicates that they're non-story. What does that mean? It simply means there is no floor plan. When you create a level, you've got an option to create a floor plan, to make a plan view. If you don't, that's generally referred to as non-story. Uh, you can simply call these back in again by going to view, plan views and floor plan. Any floor plans that you don't have um, that are available under elevations can be created. But I'm not going to do that. I'm happy enough that these are for reference only. So let's have a look back in this view. I'm going to have a look at the ceiling. I'm going to change the level. I'm going to pop the offset to zero and I'm going to change the level, the high level ceiling. So you'll see this is referencing my high level ceiling. But I'm going to edit the boundary. So let's take a look at edit in this boundary. And I want to make sure that I have a hole in the middle. Um, so this bulkhead ceiling, I want to have 500 mil all the way around raised. So I'm going to go to my rectangle tool and I'm going to make the offset minus 500. I'm going to hook in from corner to corner as shown. Make sure I'm hooking into my magenta line. And that's fine. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to annotate this because I want to make sure that that 500 mil is actually maintained. So we'll take a quick dimension and we'll do a lock. And these dimensions will only appear when they're actually in edit mode. So more or less when the lines are magenta. Let's do the last one and lock. So when we're ready, we can click the tick to say we're finished the ceiling. You see that the dimensions will physically disappear. So this means now if I move my wall, my 500 mil boundary is going to be maintained. Now I don't want to have that as a 600 by 600 grid, so I'm going to change it out to a plain one as shown. So what happens to my drop ceiling in the middle? Well, let's have a look. So we'll go back to home. We'll go back in the ceiling. We're going to sketch the ceiling. And we're simply going to use the rectangle tool. Once we pick from position to position, we're going to hit lock. The reason we hit the lock is we need to make sure that the drop ceiling ties into the raised ceiling. So if we hit finish, we'll see our drop ceiling position. If we move the wall, our drop ceiling again ties in to our raised ceiling. Last area to finish this out to make it a bit more detailed, if I take a section through this, you'll physically see that there's a gap. So we would probably have that studded off. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to use a wall around the boundary of this. 
So I know I don't have a wall small enough in my um, system families, so I'm just going to edit the type of a standard stud wall. So I'm going to go back into stud, let's edit the type and edit the structure. In fact, we'll duplicate it out. It's better to duplicate it because you've created um, a new system family. We'll call it 25 millimeter ceiling stud. Okay, we'll edit the structure. I'm going to remove anything outside the core boundaries. I'm just going to keep this very simple, just for demonstration purposes. And let's change the material, the plaster. Again, this would be important for takeoff or this would be important for visualization. And let's hit OK and OK. How we're going to create this, I'm going to create this by a rectangular area. I'm going to work out to my uh, finished face interior. Um, but it's important in here, my base constraints, I'm working from my lower level ceiling to my higher level ceiling, as shown. And we can simply pick from point to point. So that will physically tie in here. So if we look back at our section view, so we can see in more clear detail of that, again, we can see it. Now, I'm slightly off. So I would probably have a look at that, and the reason I'm off is simply because of my compound ceiling in here. And again, I forgot to tie it into my lower level ceiling, but that is very easy to change as soon as we hit apply as shown. So I've got a more detailed ceiling, and what I should do is I should follow around and align and lock the walls to the actual ceiling to make sure the actual structure is maintained as the wall moved. But again, I'm just keeping it simple for demonstration purposes. So we can see this in our 3D view. We go into our 3D view. We can pop out our camera so you can see the wall and you can see our bulkhead. Again, this is a more uh, simplified uh, version. You can make them quite complicated very, very easily. Let's see that in the section view. So let's go to 3D. We can change the orientation. Section 1. And again, you can see our more complicated ceiling. This is a suggested workflow. You could actually do this probably by the likes of a floor slab on an edge, but um, it's more prudent to, prudent to actually do it as a ceiling. I'm David Golly from Pentagon Solutions. Thanks for your time.